so now I would like to ask other questions about OB3FG because we've heard about the Frogans technology, we've had talked about the Frogans project, but who is in charge of this project? What is the organization in charge? It is OP3FT. Uh, OP3FT, which is an endowment fund, a fondation technological endowment fund, and to discover in more detail what this means to be an endowment fund and one which is technological, I welcome here on stage Julie Laurent, who is uh, the chief legal officer at OP3FT, uh, who will be presenting this uh, endowment fund. Now, uh, I forgot to tell you something. I should have asked you to give Alexey a hand for his presentation. Thank you, Alexey. So after this round of applause, Julie, um, of course, will be expecting even more uh, <laughs> because she's a lady. Thank you, Jean Emmanuel. Uh, I hope I get more applause for another reason than being a lady. Now, good evening. I'm uh, Julie Laurent, the head of the uh, legal affairs at OP3FT. I joined the project of some three and a half years ago. Uh, I, worked, uh, I was at the Barreau uh, de Paris before this. I'm specializing in in uh, IT uh, uh, law and uh, digital law. And my mission at OP3FT is to see to the protection of uh, OP3FT uh, rights. Uh, as I will tell you afterwards, OP3FT holds the um, rights to the techno uh, Frogans technology, as uh, you heard from Alexey. It means IT language, it means brands, uh, patents, and so on. So it means uh, intellectual property and intellectual property rights. So that's part of the legal team. It's work, and the other part of the work is to see to it that the uh, development of uh, the Frogans uh, technology respects uh, the uh, rights, uh, uh, IP rights of uh, third parties. And to uh, make a long story short, my mission is to, so to see uh, to the development of all the legal documentation of OP3FG, in particular the bylaws, uh, which I took part in, and uh, the, the creation of these bylaws. For OP3 3 f 3 now, uh, thank you, Julie. What people wonder is, what does this acronym stand for, OP3FT? Yes, well, OP3FT means the Organization for the Promotion, the Protection, and the Improvement of the Fragrance Technology. So, PPP in, in French, Promotion, Protection, and uh, Progress, if you will. Now, um, as uh, Alexey told us earlier, the Fragrance uh, project started in the early 2000s, but OP3FT was created uh, or established only later in 2012. So why is it? Well, in fact, yes, OP3FT was um, established uh, on the 17th of March 2012. Uh, so at the beginning of the project in 1999, uh, between this and 2012, quite a number of years, of course. And with Alexey, we heard quite a lot about the, the history. But with the four objectives that we posted on the screen earlier, which are the major founding principles of the project. And in addition to this, what I could say is that Right from the start, from the answer, the idea was to make this Frogans technology something free of charge, something that would be open and something accessible to all and for uh, ever. Um, so the, que the question we had throughout the project was, what is the legal structure that is best adapted or suited to um, uphold these objectives? So we did quite a lot of work on this to see uh, who would be steering the project, because in fact, why should we by, because by leaving the project in the hands of a business company, we might have been faced with a number of problems. The first one is uh, it could be bought back like a big uh, uh, major company that decides to buy this because they decide that uh, uh, f services free of charge is, uh, is not good because it doesn't pay. And so they turn it into a paying technology, and that would be a risk. And the second risk, which we saw with the open office um, uh, when the Sun was bought by Oracle is that the business company 
because uh, again for money reasons they decide to drop the project so all the people who've been working for years on a project uh, overnight they're, they're left stranded because and they're told to move on to something else and the last risk that we wanted to circumvent is changes in the conditions for using the technology because what we see and what I have seen over the last few years is you have major companies I'm not quoting any names so, or well okay, Apple or Twitter we have great conditions of use you develop an app or a project within the framework of uh, um, arrangements that are valued at time t but at time t plus one they change the conditions for use and your application or your activity no longer is no longer viable because it's no longer compatible with the conditions for use and this is the kind of um, consideration that guided on um, the, the the creation of op 3 ft that is to have a legal framework that would guarantee both for the users of the technology but also all the entrepreneurs uh, who want to develop their um, business activities related to this technology that they can be um, uh, comfortable that this technology will remain free of charge open accessible to all and that this will hold true uh, over time um, so this is why it took so long so this is why today it's a fund de dation endowment fund that holds this um, frequency technology and develops the project and this is the legal structure which uh, was considered as being the ideal instrument for the fragrance um, project uh, in adapted to, to them what they had in mind uh, when creating it thank you Julie it's very clear now uh, but you, you did say that there was a founder uh, for the, the progress project that it was a business company so so what happened to this um, company after and how did it uh, find its uh, role in the programs um, project as uh, Alexis said uh, frozen state is based on a number of components and on an addressing system and identifies the fragrance addresses now the fragrance addresses are managed in terms of registration and uh, selling by the handled by a business company which is the founder okay so the way it works if you uh, know about mm, domain names it's not exactly the same but it's a bit like it in terms of a structure in fact no it's further down thank you in fact you have a um, register um, register operator you have ICANN for it, that sets the legal framework like the the regulator like OP3 FT uh, which has a more complex role in a way but ICANN uh, will delegate to business companies the management of the GPLD for ICANN uh, dot com for instance, ICANN will delegate the operation of the dot com to a company called Verisign and this company will handle the dot com and the dot net and in part as, uh, within the Frogans network we have the same structure they have the OP3 FT uh, which has signed a delegation agreement with the um, operator of the core uh, registry there you see on the left and uh, Frogans core registry and uh, the delegation agreement is like a, an operating license that is the uh, operator holds a license an exclusive and global license to um, handle the Frogans core registry for which they pay a license fee on a monthly basis to ob 3 ft and this um, uh, operate this license fee is a percentage of the revenues generated by the um, technical and commercial operation of the progress core registry that is the selling of uh, progress addresses in fact so you see the way it works so you have a delegation contract between the um, uh, endowment fund OP3 and uh, the uh, um, company the business company so I um, very much invite you to read uh, the, um, uh, the the contract which is available in the English language on frogans.org it's a very um, comprehensive uh, uh, contract you will see N not because I did it and in fact it's a 10 year term the, the license which uh, contains all the obligations of the um, Frogans core registry operator uh, 
which is STN One Interactive um, today. So thank you, Julie. So this is um, this uh, diagram is uh, uh, available on this uh, site, uh, um, ob3ft.org. It's quite interesting. Uh, you have the contract, you have the delegation agreement. Uh, but I'm wondering whether the people present in the uh, audience uh, would not maybe understand what is the benefit for them to use this technology and what is the, the benefit that it should be held by the OP3FT uh, Endowment Fund. Well, as I said in my introduction, this is also why we thought we would um, uh, establish this OP3FT. The benefit for the use of the program technology is the fact that OP3FT offers four uh, major guarantees. The first one is that it is free of charge because uh, it's written into the bylaws of OB3FT. So this principle cannot be challenged, cannot be questioned. So as I said earlier, um, the um, technology cannot be uh, bought back by a major group or business company that would decide that, in fact, this technology must be paid for. So whatever happens to OP3FT, if, even if it should, uh, if the, the company should be terminated, uh, the, the technology will remain free of charge. The second guarantee. Uh, which is also quite fundamental, is neutrality. What do I mean by neutrality? OP3 is an endowment fund. It's an organization which must work for the public interest or benefit. And this public benefit or general interest is um, controlled by two major mechanisms, first by the uh, authority, uh, which is the Prefect of Paris. The Prefect of Paris, Paris Prefect, will check that OP3FT is uh, acting for the public interest, for the general interest. Now, the second level of control is that all decisions made by the Board of Directors of OP3FT are submitted to public consultation, for public consultation. Therefore, from the moment the Board of Directors makes a decision, the decision is uh, made available on our discussion list for public consultation, so anybody, you all could uh, make comments, uh, uh, remind the Board of Directors, for instance, that this uh, arrangement is contrary to the, um, this or that principle that is uh, provided for under the bylaws. And the third point, which is important as well, is the, the fact that this endowment fund is headed by a Board of Directors in that, uh, as per the bylaws, the directors are uh, supposed to act by uh, and according to certain principles. They have, the first one is that they should not uh, represent uh, private interests. They cannot represent a company, another business. So when they sit on the board of directors, they are uh, there are persons, physical persons, and the users of the program technology must respect the, uh, abide by the bylaws of the um, programs uh, and OP3FT. And we have for this uh, compliance team, a values compliance team that sees to it that all decisions made by the board of directors are indeed in compliance with the principles of OP3FT as an endowment fund. So this is the second guarantee, the, the guarantee of neutrality. And we have number three. I'll try and uh, go through this a bit quickly, uh, is stability. Uh, within OP3FT, in fact, stability mm, involves three components. The first thing is that the endowment of OP3FT is not uh, confrontable. So what you see here in this um, is non-expandable. So the initial endowment of OP3FT is uh, there visible on the left-hand side, which um, corresponds to the programs technology. This is the uh, contribution that was made by the founder on a free of charge and irrevocable by basis to OP3FT. And this endowment, uh, as I said, is irrevocable. That is, uh, whatever 
never happens. The founder can never take it back. And this principle is written into the French law, actually. So there's no way you could challenge this. So this is the first pillar of stability. That is, this um, endowment is irrevocable. The second principle is what I was telling you a few minutes ago, is the non-expandability of the um, endowment. That is, a P3FT cannot transfer this endowment. That is, whatever it has received as an endowment, can, it can never transfer it, give it, or, or do anything else with it uh, to the benefit of some third party. It must keep it within uh, the remit of uh, OP3FT, if you will. Um, it, it is supposed to develop it, but it cannot consume it. Uh, it cannot destroy it. It cannot uh, use it up or chop it up into pieces and sell it. No, it has to remain integral and developed. So this is what we call the non-expandability of the endowment. And this is, if you will, what makes uh, this uh, system proposed by IP3FT a stable system because the Frogan's technology will always forever remain the uh, property of uh, IP3FT. And even if the IP3FT were to disappear, the Frogan's technology will have to be transmitted uh, to an, or transferred to another endowment fund or another such body but cannot be uh, transferred to a uh, profit-making organization, because otherwise it would be um, contrary to French law. The third point, which I will have to go through quicker, uh, is the stability. That this is the, the in fact, the, the aim of uh, OP3 is to develop the, uh, OP, uh, the program technology as an internet standard. This is fundamental. This is absolutely fundamental that it is written as one of the aims or targets or of uh, purposes of uh, OP3 because although there are different uh, definitions of an open standard, uh, it uh, imposes a number of obligations, uh, for instance, uh, to submit the development of the technology for public consultation. Another one would be um, an obligation to publish free of charge all the technical specifications. This follows also from this definition, and also it should be royalty free. There are no royalties like uh, IP royalties when you to be paid for when you use the program technology. There are, of course, there are, but. Uh, mm. These is royalty free. You don't have to pay uh, any fees to use the program's technology, and you don't have to pay license fees to OP3 FD. It is the license is given for free. And the last um, aspect uh, about this stability, but Thomas will tell you more about it later on, is that we offer a framework, uh, both a technical and a legal framework, which which is um, specific to this frequency technology because we wanted to mm, set a number of uh, non-discriminatory uh, conditions so that all people using the frequency technology would be able to understand this environment that we wanted to uh, be as clear as possible and we hopefully we we believe you will find it very uh, much so but um, Thomas will tell you more about that later on and just to uh, conclude, the fourth guarantee to the fact that, that we offer to the users with the op 3 f three is uh, sustainability, is the long term, that it's future proof. Whatever happens to op 3 f uh, the guarantees that we are offering here will remain, either because op 3 f three continues to guarantee them, or because if op 3 f three was to be discontinued, the whole project with all its principles and its operating conditions will be transferred to another endowment fund. So thank you, Julie. So OP3FT, the four, um, uh, three principles, four guarantees. So um, free of charge, neutrality, um, accessibility, and uh, sustainability. Thank you for uh, making your speech a bit shorter because we're lagging behind. But we still have to, a little time for questions. So now, question time in the audience. Any questions about OP3FT? You've um, um, 
depicted the legal profile of uh, this OP3FT organization, but uh, maybe uh, there are questions about this uh, uh, OP3FT. So, no, I still have the protector. It's glaring light in my eyes. No, no questions, no questions. No, I, I suppose it was crystal clear. Thank you very much, Julie. I had a question, but I'll ask you later on. Not a big problem, no big deal. Uh, anyway, um, following with my own presentation, this will be save me some time. I can see a question over there. Thank you. On OP3 FT. Hello. I'm Sammy Metro. It's weird to be speaking in the microphone. I wanted to know, contributors, can they be private entities, corporations, associations? Well, indeed, I didn't talk about that to shorten that part of my presentation on increasing the endowment, because the initial endowment for OP3FT is formed of with the foregans technology, but the endowment can be increased throughout the duration of OP3FT, either through contributions, as you can note, these contributions by definition. Exactly like the initial endowment, they are uh, contributions for free and irrevocably. We drew up a policy for contributors, setting the legal framework applicable to contributions. But contributors may be natural persons, legal entities. The requirement for the contribution to be accepted is that it must be made for free and it must be irrevocable. Meaning, for example, that if you contribute, let's say, a piece of code, you will be granting all your rights to the code. Like us, it will be integrated in the Frogan's technology, since we guarantee that our technology will always be open and free. You must also convey your rights to us. That's essential. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julie. Any other questions? No? Well, I suggest let's move on to the next presentation. Thank you, Julie, once again. And let me remind you 